Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, I wanted to explore parallel universes, but in particular, the way that we see parallel universes in fiction, in media. If anybody that has followed my channel knows that this is one of my greatest interests, something I'm obsessed with. If you read my book, The Reality Revolution, you will get my story where I seemingly experienced a shift into a parallel reality. Parallel universes is a real thing. It is for me. One proof of this is the way we see it discussed in our media, in our fiction. Neville Goddard said, there is no fiction, something that was confirmed to me by Frederick Dotson when I interviewed him. There is no fiction. Whatever we are exploring within our minds is something real. Oftentimes, I believe that we are exposed to different concepts and ideas through spirit by movies that we watch, books that we read, comic books. All of these are ways that we learn about the nature of the universe. If you're like me, you have seen parallel universes, parallel dimensions, alternate universes, alternate realities discussed so much lately. It's everywhere. I just got back from watching Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And of course, I absolutely loved it. I'm a big fan of the MCU. So I'm probably a little biased and I will see it through rose colored glasses. But that presented parallel universes in a particular way. It's discussed in Rick and Morty and in DC comics and different books. And I want to go over a lot of the different fiction that I can write down and remember and the ways that the parallel universes are discussed in this fiction, because I believe we can learn about the reality of parallel universes from reading this fiction. If you are writing a book about parallel universes, perhaps it's coming from some place that has some reality to it. I just loved the storyline in Doctor Strange, but in particular, they had some rules set up in that particular movie. Only one person had this power where they could travel directly into an alternate reality, but they could explore alternate realities by a process called dream walking in which Wanda or the Scarlet Witch went through a particular ritual and in meditation, she would go into these other universes, take over the body of herself in that other universe. Each of the different fictions sort of establishes different rules for the way that parallel universes work. The most recent example that I was exposed to that I thought for me was the most realistic for what I've experienced is a TV series on Apple Plus called The Shining Girls. It's a great book. Totally recommend you watch it. But the way that she experiences these shifts, the main character is very much how I have experienced it. She'll go to her desk. It's laid out in a certain way. There's a coffee mug there. And then she'll come back to her desk and somebody else is sitting there and they say, no, you, you sit over there. Or she'll walk to a building and then it changes and it's not the same building. It just seems like it just shifts. And then you have to collectively understand what's going on and try to maneuver through this world. When it happened to me, I thought I was going through some sort of psychosis and really questioned my own sanity. But the more I read these other myths and ideas, the more I understand that really it's been talked about so much in fiction, it has to be real. But it's just fun to talk about. It's fun for us to talk about. And I believe that these fictional representations of parallel universes is a good starting point for us to understand the nature of parallel universes and how it works. A parallel universe is a hypothetical self-contained plane of existence coexisting with our own. The sum of all potential parallel universes that constitute reality is often called a multiverse, as it was in the Doctor Strange movie. 
While the four terms are generally synonymous and can be used interchangeably in most cases, there is sometimes an additional connotation implied with the term alternate universe or reality that implies the reality is a variant of our own with some overlap with the similarly named alternate history. Fiction has long borrowed an idea of another world from myth, legend, and religion. Heaven, hell, Olympus, and Valhalla are all alternate universes different from the material realm. Plato reflected deeply on the parallel realities resulting in Platonism in which the upper reality is perfect while the lower earth reality is an imperfect shadow of the heavenly. The lower reality is similar but with flaws. We discuss a version of parallel realities in the law of one material which discusses different densities. There may be a difference in densities and dimensions and we can discuss that. The concept is also found in ancient Hindu mythology, in texts such as the Puranas, which expressed an infinite number of universes, each with its own gods. Similarly, in Persian literature, the adventures of Bulyakaya, a tale in the 1001 Nights, describes the protagonist Bulyakaya learning of alternative worlds or universes that are similar two but still distinct from his own. One of the first science fiction examples is Murray Leinster's Sidewise in Time. If you are like me and you love old science fiction, totally recommend this one. In that particular story, portions of alternate universes replace corresponding geographical regions in this universe. Sidewise in Time describes in the manner that's similar to requiring both longitude and latitude coordinates in order to mark your location on Earth. So too does time. Traveling along latitude is akin to time travel, moving through past, present, and future, while traveling along longitude is to travel perpendicular to time and to other realities, hence the name of the short story. Thus, another common term for a parallel universe is another dimension, stemming from the idea that if the fourth dimension is time, the fifth dimension, a direction at a right angle to the fourth, is an alternate reality. In modern literature, a parallel universe can be roughly divided into two categories to allow for stories where elements that would ordinarily violate the laws of nature and to serve as a starting point for speculative fiction, asking oneself, what if blank turned out differently? Examples of the former include Terry Pratchett's Discworld and C.S. Lewis's The Chronicles of Narnia, while examples of the latter include Harry Turtledove's World War series. A parallel universe, or more specifically, continued interaction between parallel universes and our own may serve as a central plot point, or it may simply be mentioned and quickly dismissed, having served its purpose of establishing a realm unconstrained by realism. The aforementioned Discworld, for example, only very rarely mentions our world or any other worlds as Pratchett set the books in a parallel universe instead of our reality to allow for magic on the disc. The Chronicles of Narnia also utilizes this to a lesser extent. The idea of a parallel universe is brought up but only briefly mentioned in the introduction ending its main purpose to bring the protagonist from our reality to the setting of the books. In fact, I would say the majority of fantasy novels that you read where for instance we have game of thrones you are acknowledging the existence of this parallel universe where all this stuff is going on that's why i believe in our consciousness when we're watching stories that have a fictional nature like this it may be from other planets or other realities that we have access to from our deep conscious mind while technically incorrect and looked down upon by hard science fiction fans and authors, the idea of another dimension has become synonymous with the term parallel universe. The usage is particularly common in movies, television, and comic books, and much less so in modern prose science fiction. The idea of a parallel world was popularized in comic books with the publication of Flash 123, Flash of Two Worlds, in 1961. 
In written science fiction, new dimension more commonly and more accurately refer to additional coordinate axes beyond the three spatial axes with which we are familiar. By proposing travel along these axes which are not normally perceptible, the traveler can reach worlds that are otherwise unreachable and invisible. In 1884, Edwin A. Abbott wrote the seminal novel exploring the concept called Flatland. Totally recommend it, a romance of many dimensions. It describes a world of two dimensions inhabited by living squares, triangles, and circles called Flatland, as well as Pointland, zero dimensions, Lineland, one dimension, and Spaceland, three dimensions, and finally posits the possibilities of even greater dimensions. Isaac Asimov, in his foreword to the 1984 edition of Flatland, said, the best introduction one can find into the manner of perceiving dimensions. In 1895, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells used time as an additional dimension, in the sense taking the four-dimensional model of classical physics and interpreting time as a space-like dimension in which humans could travel with the right equipment. Wells also used the concept of parallel universes as a consequence of time as the fourth dimension in stories like The Wonderful Visit and Men Like Gods, an idea proposed by the astronomer Simon Newcomb, who talked about both time and parallel universes. Add a fourth dimension to space and there is room for an indefinite number of universes all alongside of each other as there is for an indefinite number of sheets of paper when we pile them upon each other. There are many examples where authors have explicitly created additional spatial dimensions for their characters to travel in to reach parallel universes. In Doctor Who, and I'm a big Doctor Who fan, the Doctor accidentally enters a parallel universe while attempting to repair the TARDIS console in Inferno. Douglas Adams, in the last book of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, Mostly Harmless, uses the idea of probability as an extra axis, in addition to the classical four dimensions of space and time, similar to the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics. Although according to the novel, they were more a model to capture the continuity of space, time, and probability, Robert A. Heinlein in The Number of the Beast postulated a six-dimensional universe. In addition to the three spatial dimensions, he invoked symmetry to add two new temporal dimensions so there would be two sets of three, like the fourth dimension of H.G. Wells' Time Traveler, these extra dimensions can be traveled by persons using the right equipment. Of course, there's hyperspace, perhaps the most common use of the concept of parallel universe in science fiction is the concept of hyperspace. We see some discussion of hyperspace in Babylon 5, of course, Star Wars, It's even kind of discussed in Star Trek, though when you travel in warp, you're not necessarily traveling in hyperspace. It's used in science fiction. The concept of hyperspace often refers to a parallel universe that can be used as a faster than light shortcut for interstellar travel. Rationales for this form of hyperspace vary from work to work, but the two common elements are that it is possible to enter and exit from hyperspace with reasonable ease and there is reason to enter and exit hyperspace rather than travel conventionally. Sometimes hyperspace is used to refer to the concept of additional coordinate axes. In this model, the universe is thought to be crumpled in some higher spatial dimension and that traveling in this higher spatial dimension, a ship can move vast distances in the common spatial dimensions. An analogy is to crumple a newspaper into a ball and stick a needle straight through. The needle will make widely spaced holes in the two-dimensional surface of the paper. While this idea invokes a new dimension, it is not an example of a parallel universe. It is a more scientifically plausible use of hyperspace. Of course, we have wormholes. These are usually just plot devices that are not super important, but they allow for the travel of faster than light. While a parallel universe may be invoked by the concept, the nature of the universe is not often explored. So while stories involving hyperspace might be the most common use of the parallel universe concept in fiction, it is not the most common source of fiction about parallel universes. Technically, alternative histories as a result of time travel are not parallel universes. 
While multiple parallel universes can coexist simultaneously, only one history or alternative history can exist at any one moment. As alternative history usually involves, in essence, overriding the original timeline with a new one. As a result, travel between alternative histories is not possible without reverting the timeline back to the original. Parallel universes as a result of time travel can serve simply as the backdrop, or it may be a central plot point. The Guns of the South by Harry Turtledove, where the Confederate Army is given thousands of AK-47 rifles and ends up winning the American Civil War, is, is a good example of the former. While Fritz Lieber's novel, The Big Time, where a war between two alternative futures manipulating history to create a timeline that results in or realizes their own world is a good example of the latter. Subscribing to the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics, alternative histories in fiction can arise as a natural phenomenon of the universe. In these works, the idea is that each choice every person makes, each leading to a different result, both occurs so when a person decides between jam or butter on his toast, two universes are created, one where that person chose jam and another where that person chose butter. The concept of sidewise time travel, a term taken from Murray Leinster's Sidewise in Time, is used to allow characters to pass through many different alternative histories, all descended from some common branch point. Often worlds that are more similar to each other are considered closer to each other in terms of sidewise travel. For example, a universe where World War II ended differently would be closer to us than one where Imperial China colonized the New World in the 15th century. H. Beam Piper used this concept, naming it Paratime, and writing a series of stories involving the Paratime police who regulated travel between these alternative realities as well as the technology to do so. Keith Lommer, one of my favorite authors, used the same concept of sideways time in his 1962 novel, Worlds of the Imperium. More recently, novels such as Frederick Pohl's The Coming of the Quantum Cats and Neil Stevenson's Anathem explore human-scale readings of the many worlds interpretation, postulating that historical events or human consciousness spawns or allows travel among alternative universes. Universes Types frequently explored in sidewise and alternative history works include worlds whose Nazis won the Second World War, as in The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. Great series, you can catch it on Amazon. SSGB by Len Dighton and Fatherland by Robert Harris. And worlds where the Roman Empire never fell, as in Roma Eterna by Robert Silverberg and Romanitas by Sophia McDougall and Warlords of Utopia by Lance Parkin. The MCU series Loki takes it to another level, arguing that there is a group that polices all the timelines, clipping off the branches of different realities so that there was one main timeline that existed, which is a fascinating concept. If we had the technological capability to understand these different parallel realities and they started to travel between each other, then naturally we would start to fight against the movement between the two and we could stop the evolution of different parallel timelines as they occurred. The concept of counter-earth might seem similar to a parallel universe, but is actually a distinct idea. A counter-earth is a planet that shares Earth's orbit but is in opposition, therefore cannot be seen from Earth. There would be no necessity that such a planet would be like Earth in any way although typically in fiction it is practically identical to Earth, since counter-Earth is not only within our universe but within our solar system, reaching it can be accomplished with ordinary space travel. Jerry and Sylvia Anderson use this concept in their 1969 movie Doppelganger, in which a counter-Earth is detected by astronomers and a crewed mission launched by U.S. European Space Consortium to explore it. Though not impossible, the idea is rather implausible, since none of the other planets in the solar system has such a twin sharing its orbit. Over a long period of time, gravitational influences would make such an orbit unstable, resulting in a collision or repulsion of the two planets. H.G. Wells placed the world of his 1903 modern utopia within our universe, but much further away. Out beyond Sirius, far in the deeps of space, beyond the flight of a cannonball flying for a billion years, beyond the range of an unaided vision, blazes the star that is our utopia sun. To those who know where to look, with a good opera glass 
aiding good eyes, it and three fellows that seem in a cluster with it, though they are incredible billions of miles nearer, make it just the faintest speck of light, is what he said. About to go planets even as our planets, but weaving a different fate, and in its place among them is Utopia with its sister mate the moon. It is a planet like our planet, the same continents, the same islands, the same oceans and seas. Another Fujiyama is beautiful there, dominating another Yokohama, and another Matterhorn overlooks the icy disorder of another Theoryu. It is a, like our planet that a terrestrial botanist might find his every species there, even to the meanest pondweed or the remotest alpine blossom. However, Wells did not explain how such a precise duplication of our world could occur, nor how could a person be suddenly transported in the twinkling of an eye from our world to the precise equivalent spot on that world. It is plausible scientifically that the world that we see is based upon some fundamental scientific laws. So a tree is a tree on earth as it is on any other planet because of the natural use of DNA and environments. So it's possible that many of the planets that are existing throughout our galaxy are based on these fundamental laws. So you may have similar planets that are like parallel realities, just similar, depending upon its nature. That's what I believe. I believe that light in itself carries the information of all living things. And then in many cases, many of the planets in our universe are similar. Convergent evolution is a biological concept whereby unrelated species acquire similar traits because they adapted to a similar environment. This is discussed in Star Trek and a number of different science fiction books. In Bread and Circuses, uh, a Star Trek episode, the Enterprise encounters a planet called Magna Roma, which has many physical resemblances to Earth, such as its atmosphere, land-to-ocean ratio, and size. The landing party discovers that the planet is at roughly a late 20th century level of technology, but its society is similar to the Roman Empire, as if the empire had not fallen but had continued to that time. There's also a reference to the Roman god Jupiter as the namesake of a new line of automobile and gladiator fights are televised in prime time. Slavery on this world has also developed into an institution with slaves guaranteed medical benefits and old age pensions, so the workers grew more content and never rebelled. Another episode is Omega Glory, where the crew visits a planet on which there is a conflict between two people called the Yangs and the Coms. They discover that the Yangs are like Earth's Yankees, in other words, Americans, and the Coms are like Earth's communists. The Yangs, who had at some point in the past been conquered by the Coms, had a garbled speech that was almost identical to the American Pledge of Allegiance and treated the U.S. Constitution as a sacred text. A similar concept in biology is gene flow. In this case, a planet may start out differently from Earth, but due to the influence of Earth's culture, the planet comes to resemble Earth in some way. Star Trek also frequently used this theory in Patterns of Force, a planet discovered to be very similar to Nazi Germany due to the influence of a historian that came to reside there who believed that the Nazi fascism itself was not evil and under benevolent leadership could be a good government. While a piece of the action, the Enterprise crew visits a planet that a hundred years after a book Chicago mobs of the 20s that had been left behind by previous Earthcraft, their society resembles mob-ruled cities of the Prohibition era. In 1954, Princeton University doctoral applicant Hugh Everett III proposed that parallel universes coexist with and diverge from our own universe. Everett's many worlds theory, as it came to be known, was his endeavor to respond to some unanswered inquiries raised in the developing field of quantum material science. In 2012, two quantum physicists, Dr. S. Haroche and Dr. D. Warland, received a Nobel Prize for their experiments, which showed that a particle can be at two locations at the same time. It is common in fantasy for authors to find ways to bring a protagonist from our world to the fantasy world. Before the mid-20th century, this was most often done by hiding fantastic worlds within unknown distant locations on Earth. Peasants who seldom, if ever, traveled far from their villages could not conclusively say it was impossible that an ogre or other fantastical being could live in an hour away. Characters in the author's world could board a ship and find themselves on a fantastic island, as Jonathan Swift does in Gulliver's Travels or in the 1949 novel Silverlock by John 
Myers Myers, or be sucked into a tornado and land in Oz. These lost world stories can be seen as geographical equivalents of a parallel universe, as the worlds portrayed are separate from our own and hidden to everyone except those who take the difficult journey there. The geographical lost world can blur into a more explicit parallel universe when the fantasy realm overlaps a section of the real world, but is much larger inside than out, as in Robert Holdstock's novel Mythago Wood. However, increasing geographical knowledge meant that such locations had to be farther and farther off. Perhaps influenced by ideas from science fiction, many works chose a setting that takes place in another separate reality. As it is now not possible to reach these worlds via conventional travel, a common trope is a portal or an artifact that connects our world and the fantasy world together. Examples being the wardrobe in C.S. Lewis's The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, or the sigil in James Branch Cabell's The Cream of the Jest. In some cases, physical travel is not even possible, and the character in our reality travels in a dream or some other altered state of consciousness, as we see in Doctor Strange. Examples include also the dream cycle stories by H.P. Lovecraft or the Thomas Covenant stories of Stephen R. Donaldson. Great series, totally recommend it. Often stories of this type have as a major theme the nature of reality itself, questioning whether the dream world is as real as the waking world. Science fiction often employs this theme in the ideas of cyberspace and virtual reality. As mentioned before, the parallel universe mold in many stories is used to transport a character from a known world into a fantasy world where the bulk of the action takes place. Whatever method is used ceases to be important for most of the story until the ending, until the protagonists return to our world. One example of this is the Outlander series, another great series that you can watch on stars, in which a woman touches a rock and is sent back in time. However, in a few cases, the interaction between the worlds is an important element so that the focus is not simply the fantasy world but on ours as well. Sometimes the intent is to let them mingle and see what would happen, such as introducing a computer programmer into a high fantasy world seen in Rick Cook's Wizardry series, while other times an attempt to keep them from mingling becomes a major plot point, such as in Aaron Alston's Doc Seed. Our grim world is paralleled by a fair world where the elves live and history echoes ours, where a major portion of the plot deals with preventing a change in interactions between the worlds. The idea of a multiverse is as fertile a subject for fantasy as it is for science fiction, allowing for epic settings and godlike protagonists. One example of an epic and far-ranging fantasy multiverse is that of Michael Moorcock, who actually named the concept in a 1963 science fiction novel, The Sundered Worlds. Like many authors after him, Moorcock was inspired by the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, saying it was an idea in the air, as most of these are, and I would have come across a reference to it in New Scientist. Physicist friends would have been talking about it. Sometimes what happens is that you're imagining these things in the context of fiction, while the physicists and mathematicians are imagining them in terms of science. I suspect it is the romantic imagination working, as it often does, perfectly efficiently in both arts and sciences. Unlike many science fiction interpretations, Moorcock's eternal champion stories go far beyond the alternative history to include mythic and sword and sorcery settings, as well as worlds more similar to or the same as our own. The term polycosmos was coined as an alternative to multiverse by the author and editor Paul LePage Barnett, also known by the pseudonym John Grant, and is built from Greek rather than Latin morphemes. It is used by Barnett to describe a concept binding together a number of his works, its nature meaning that all characters real or fictional have to coexist in all possible real, created, or dreamt worlds. They are playing hugely different roles in their various manifestations, and the relationships between them can vary quite dramatically, but the essence of them remains the same. One of my very favorite authors, Brandon Sanderson, has established what he calls the Cosmere in all of his wonderful books, and there's many of them, all exist within a cosmere of different parallel realities. There are many examples of metafictional idea of having the author's created universe rise to the same level of reality as the universe we're familiar with. 
The theme is present in works as diverse as H.G. Wells' Men Like Gods, Myers' Silverlock, and Heinlein's Number of the Beast. Fletcher Pratt and L. Sprague de Camp took the protagonist of Harold Shea series through the worlds of Norse myth, Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen, Ludovico Ariosto's Orlando Furioso and Calavale, without ever quite settling whether writers created these parallel worlds by writing these works or received impressions from the worlds and wrote them down. In an interlude set in Xanadu, a character claims that the universe is dangerous because the poem went unfinished. But whether this was his misapprehension or not is not established. Some fictional approaches definitively establish the independence of the parallel world, sometimes by having the world differ from the book's account. Other approaches have works of fiction create and affect the parallel world. El Sprague de Camp's Solomon Stone, taking place on an astral plane, is populated by the daydreams of mundane people, and in Rebecca Lachise's eccentric circles, an elf is grateful to Tolkien for transforming elves from dainty little creatures. These stories often place the author or authors in general in the same position as Zelazny's character in Amber, questioning in a literal fashion if writing is an act of creating a new world or an act of discovery of a pre-existing world, which is the question I asked at the beginning of this episode. Occasionally, this approach becomes self-referential, treating the literary universe of the work itself as explicitly parallel to the universe where the work was created. Stephen King's seven-volume Dark Tower series hinges upon the existence of multiple parallel worlds, many of which are King's own literary creations. Ultimately, the characters become aware they are only real in King's literary universe. This can be debated as an example of breaking the fourth wall and even travel a to a world twice in which, again, within the novel, they meet Stephen King and alter events in the real Stephen King's world outside of the books. An early instance of this was in works by Gardner Fox for DC Comics in the 60s, in which characters from the Golden Age, which was supposed to be a series of comic books within the DC Comics universe, would cross over into the main DC Comics universe. One comic book did provide an explanation for a fictional universe existing as a parallel universe, the parallel world does exist and it resonates into the real world. Some people in the real world pick up this resonance, gaining information about the parallel world, which they then use to write stories, which is what I'm arguing is happening when writers are discussing parallel universes. Another cool series to check out, I believe you can watch it on Netflix, is The Magicians, in which the main character is obsessed with this story that he's been reading about this alternative world, very much kind of like... Uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, except it turns out to be real. And so you see his discovery of this world after he has read about it. Robert Heinlein in The Number of the Beast quantizes the many parallel fictional universes in terms of fictions. A number of fictional universes are accessible along one of the three axes of time, which Dr. Jacob Burroughs' Time Twister can access. Each quantum level change of fiction along this time axis corresponds to a different universe from one of several bodies of fiction known to all four travelers in the inter-universal time-traveling vehicle, the Gay Deceiver. Heinlein also breaks the fourth wall by having both Heinleins, Robert and his wife Virginia, visit an inter-universal science fiction and fantasy convention in the book's last chapter. The convention was convened on Heinlein's character Lazarus Long's estate on the planet Tertius to attract the evil black hats who pursued the main characters of the number of the beast through space and time in order to destroy Dr. Burroughs and his invention. Heinlein continues this literary conceit in the cat who walks through the walls and to sail beyond the sunset using characters from throughout his science fictional career hauled forth from their own fictions to unite the war against the black hats. I love Robert Heinlein. And any of his books are great. I recommend all of them. Heinlein also wrote a standalone novel, Job, A Comedy of Justice, whose two protagonists fall from alternative universe into alternative universe, often naked, and after a number of such adventures, die and enter a stereotypically fundamental Christian heaven with many of its internal contradictions explored in the novel. Their harrowing adventures through the universes are then revealed to have been destructive testing of their souls by Loki, sanctioned by the creator, person of the creation god, 
Yahweh. The devil appears as the most sympathetic of the gods in the story, who expresses contempt for the other gods' cavalier treatment of the story's main characters. Thus, Job, a comedy of justice, rings in the theological dimension, if only for the purpose of satirizing evangelical Christianity of parallel universes, that their existence can be used by God or a number of gods. Loki seems to have made himself available to do Yahweh's work in this novel. It manages also to have a fictional multiverse angle in that references are made to Heinlein's short story They, a solipsistic tale in which reality is constantly being transmogrified behind the scenes to throw the central character of his guard and keep him from seeing reality as it truly is, which was set in the same Heinlein fictional universe as the moon is a harsh mistress. If you get a chance, check out Isekai. It's a subgenre of Japanese fantasy novels or manga revolving around a normal person being transported or trapped in a parallel universe. Often this universe already exists in the protagonist's world as a fictional universe, but it may be unbeknownst to them and it explores this concept of traveling to fictional universes. The most famous treatment of alternative universe concept could be considered The Wizard of Oz, which portrays a parallel world, famously separating the magical realm of the Land of Oz from the mundane world by filming it in Technicolor while filming the scene set in Kansas in sepia tones. At times, alternative universes have been featured in small-scale independent productions such as Kevin Brownlow and Andrew Molo's It Happened Here, featuring an alternative United Kingdom which had undergone Operation Sea Lion in 1940 and had been defeated and occupied by Nazi Germany. Another common use is as a prison for villains or demons. The idea is used in the first two Superman movies starring Christopher Reeve where Kryptonian villains were sentenced to the Phantom Zone from where they eventually escaped. An almost exactly parallel use of the idea is presented in the film The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, another classic, where the Eighth Dimension is essentially a phantom zone used to imprison villainous red lectoids. Uses in horror films include the 1986 film From Beyond, based on H.P. Lovecraft's story of the same name, where a scientific experiment induces the experimenters to perceive aliens from a parallel universe with bad results. The 1987 John Carpenter film, Prince of Darkness, is based on the premise that the essence of being described as Satan trapped in a glass canister and found in an abandoned church in Los Angeles is actually an alien being that is the son of something even more evil and powerful trapped in another universe. Protagonists accidentally free the creature who then attempts to release his father by reaching in through a mirror. Some films present parallel realities that are actually different contrasting versions of the narrative itself. Commonly, this motif is presented as different points of view revolving around a central but sometimes unknowable truth, the seminal example being Akira Kurosawa's Rashomon. Conversely, often in film noir and crime dramas, the alternative narrative is a fiction created by a central character, intentionally as in the usual suspects or unintentionally as in Angel Heart. Less often, the Alternative narratives are given equal weight in the story, making them truly alternative universes such as in the German film Run Lola Run, the short-lived British West End musical Our House, and the British film Sliding Doors. More recent films that have explicitly explored parallel universes are the 2000 film The Family Man, the 2001 cult film Donnie Darko, one of my favorites, which deals with what it terms a tangent universe that erupts from our own universe. Even Super Mario Brothers has the eponymous heroes cross over into a parallel universe ruled by humanoids who evolved from dinosaurs. A classic is The One, starring Jet Li, in which there is a complex system of realities in which Jet Li's character is a police officer in one universe and a serial killer in another who travels to other universes to destroy versions of himself so that he can take their energy and frequently asked questions from 2004. The main character runs away from a totalitarian nightmare and he enters into a cyber afterlife alternative reality. The current Star Trek films are set in an alternative universe created by the first film's villain traveling back in time, thus allowing the franchise to be rebooted without affecting the continuity of any other Star Trek film. The 2011 science fiction thriller Source Code 
employs the concepts of quantum reality and parallel universes. The characters in Cloverfield Paradox, the third installment of the franchise, accidentally create a ripple in the time-space continuum and travel into an alternative universe where the monster and the events in the first film transpired. This concept has been passively depicted in a view of a romantic couple in the Indian Tamil film Irandam Ulagam. In the 2000 film The Beach starring Leonardo DiCaprio, his character Richard, while sitting on the beach with love interest Francois, describes their utopia they have found in Thailand as their own parallel universe. Of course, the Marvel Cinematic Universe heavily features the multiverse. Doctor Strange features the Dark Dimension ruled by Dormammu and the Masters of the Mystic Arts. The order of the titular Doctor Strange belongs to who draws upon mystical energies from other realities to safeguard their own. In the finale to the MCU's Infinity Saga, Avengers Endgame, the 2023 Avengers create alternative timelines during the mission of collecting past Infinity Stones to reverse the snap caused by Thanos in Avengers Infinity War and revive half of all life in the universe. The ramifications of these actions are explored in the MCU Phase 4 series Loki, which follow the 2012 variant of Loki who encounters the Time Variant's authority. This creates a chain of events where a female variant of Loki named Sylvie kills he who remains the mastermind behind the TVA, who is also a variant of the main antagonist of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Can't wait till that comes out. The animated series What If follows multiple variants of MCU characters and alternate versions of events from the Infinity Saga guided by the Watcher. Shang-Chi in The Legend of Ten Rings features Talo, a mythical village set in an alternative universe that houses many Chinese mythological creatures and where the climax of the film takes place. Of course, Spider-Man No Way Home, which recently came out, has Spider-Man encounter villains from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy and the Amazing Spider-Man series, who previously died fighting their variants of Spider-Man and succeeds in curing them, thus preventing their deaths with the help of versions of himself from each of the villains' universes. I have read that the DC Extended Universe will bring the multiverse into its film The Flash, which I look forward to, in which he goes back in time to prevent his mother's murder, which was also explored in the TV series The Flash. According to what I've read, this feature will have Michael Keaton and Ben Affleck both reprising the role of Batman. Of course, the best place to really get a feeling for the parallel reality is in television. It's all over television. You can go all the way back to the 90s, one of my favorite series, Sliders, especially those first few seasons. It depicts a group of adventurers visiting assorted parallel universes as they attempt to find their home universe. Included in the first season is a universe where the world is stuck in the Ice Age with no life anywhere. Another episode includes Honest Abe, Never to be President, in which the United States loses World War I and World War II and they are controlled by a senator and technology is at an all-time low. One of the earliest television plots to feature parallel time was a 1970 storyline on the soap opera Dark Shadows. Vampire Barnabas Collins found a room in Collinwood, which served as a portal to parallel time, and he entered the room in an attempt to escape from his current problems. A well-known and often imitated example is the original Star Trek episode entitled Mirror Mirror. The episode in, introduced an alternative version of the Star Trek universe, and this has been explored even in Star Trek Discovery. I'm a big Trekkie, so I love that stuff. Where the main characters were barbaric and cruel to the point of being evil. When the parallel universe concept is parody, the allusion is often to this Star Trek episode. A previous episode of the Trek series first hinted at the potential of differing reality planes titled The Alternative Factor. A mad scientist from our universe named Lazarus B hunts down the sane Lazarus A, resident of an antimatter comprised continuum. In the 70s, there was a British series called The Tomorrow People. There are places where you can still find the DVDs for this. And in the second season, an episode Rift in Time pitted the three telepath core characters and allies against time-traveling interlopers from an alternative history where the Roman Empire developed the steam engine. Multiple episodes of Red Dwarf use the concept. Another that comes to mind is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 
experienced a parallel universe where she was a mental patient in normal again and not really the Slayer at all. The plot of the Season 4 episode of Charmed, entitled Brain Drain, features the source of all evil kidnapping Piper Hallwell and forcing her into a deep coma where she experiences an alternative reality in which the Hallwell Manor is actually a mental institution. The animated series Futurama had an episode where the characters travel between Universe 1 and Universe A, also known as Universe I, <laughs> via boxes containing each universe, and one of the major jokes is an extended argument between the two sets of characters over which set were the evil ones. They also had another episode where they traveled to the edge of the universe, and in the distance was the cowboy universe where everyone was dressed as cowboys. The idea of a parallel universe and the concept of deja vu was a major plot line in the first season finale of Fringe, one of my favorite series of all time, featuring Leonard Nimoy of, of Star Trek. And the show has gone on to feature parallel universes prominently, so definitely check that one out. There is a discussion of parallel universes in Lost, the result of characters traveling back in time to prevent the crash of Oceanic Flight 815, in the anime and manga series of Dragon Ball Z, the android saga Future Trunks return to the past to give Goku medicine to prevent him from dying of a heart disease and warns him of the androids. The anime Turn a Gundam attempted to combine all the parallel Gundam universes. There is actually a ton of anime and manga series that explores Eureka 7 AO, Katekyo Hitman Reborn, Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, the anime series Bakugan features a parallel universe called Vestroya. Another one is Digimon. There's a parallel universe called Digital World. In the Star Trek Next Generation episode of Parallels, Lieutenant Worf traveled to several parallel universes when his shuttlecraft went through a time-space fissure. There's the episode Fantastic Journey in which several travelers lost in the Bermuda Triangle find themselves in another world. Another show called Other World in which a family gets trapped in an alternate world. Parallax, in which a boy discovers portals to multiple parallel universe in his hometown. Awake, where a man switches between realities wherever he goes to sleep. One in which his wife survived a car accident that killed her, their son. And one in which his son survived, but his wife died. As I mentioned before, in Fringe, a main element of the series is the loss of balance and the eventual collision of two universes and the moral ramifications of it. Really, the exploration in that series is what happens when they collide. Rick and Morty, of course, is just fantastic, hilarious, and on point, and it discusses infinite universes in a very funny way. Of course, we got Stranger Things, in which a small town becomes a gateway between dimensions. We have the TV series Flash. Supernatural had several episodes that explored parallel universes. Doctor Who, The Man in the High Castle, The King Eternal Monarch, in which the country of Korea is unified. Another great one on Netflix, I just wish they wouldn't have canceled it, is the OA, in which characters discover parallel universes and attempt to travel to them. And we mentioned What If before, which is great. A couple other books that come to mind is Time's Echoes Trilogy by Brian Davis, addresses the idea of parallel worlds as it delves into a plot in which the main character travels between three different Earths. And then Overstrike by C.M. Angus, features high-functioning schizophrenics with the ability to simultaneously perceive multiple realities. I could spend a whole episode just talking about different comic books and video games that fully explore the concept of the parallel universe. I've now gone over almost 40 minutes of examples of parallel universes. I think I had a little blurb like this in my book, but it was just very short. When you really step back and try to consider all the sources of knowledge where people are talking about parallel universes isn't that proof that they exist if our consciousness is so obsessed with this topic why why and we are learning about the intricacies of parallel universes what it means what the implications are how it works from this literature and as neville goddard says there is no fiction all things are real Thoughts become things. So there's always the possibility that even if it's not real, now it is because our thoughts create reality. But parallel universes in fiction, to me, is an example of proof of why they exist. 
because I believe when we write fiction, we are exploring a world of consciousness that is from the truth and the creator. If the creator is infinite, why wouldn't he have alternate universes in his creation? What better way to learn more about him or herself than the creation of a multiverse? Please put in the comments if I missed any examples, because I'm sure I did. There's a ton that are available to us, and I can certainly talk about this forever. It's something I'm super fascinated by. But what does it mean? What are the implications of having so much fiction and media available discussing parallel realities? Why? That's really the question I want you to ponder. If it's so deeply entrenched within our media landscape, just because it's fiction doesn't mean it's not real. I believe because there is so much fiction, it does give you the idea that it is real. Because when people create fiction, they are exploring their consciousness, exploring a world of imagination, and imagination is God. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution. Mm -hmm.